Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the fourth and final figure to be released as part of the first wave of this all new Transformers G1 inspired retro reissue series. We shall be concluding this wave here with Headmaster Hardhead and I'm actually really excited to see what this figure has in store for us as the previous three figures that I've taken a look at have all really impressed me. Starting off firstly by taking a look here at the packaging you can see that much like the previous figures this here is of course heavily inspired by the original G1 packaging. You can see we have an amazing retro image there of Hardhead. We've got the figure transformed in his alternate mode with a fair window view display. We've also got his Headmaster Juros, includes accessory Transformers. We've got the vintage Hasbro logo Transformers there at the top. We've got the conversion steps, although the figure is a little more complex than what it does showcase here on the top of the box. As we spin around here to the side, we've got some product shots of Hardhead in robot mode, as well as of course in vehicle mode. And then as we take a look here towards the back of the box, we once again have that amazing vintage artwork of Fortress Maximus, Scorponok, and various other Headmaster auto bots and of course the septicons we have the classic stats there at the bottom of course which you can clip and save and then the other side merely just has the same product shots that we saw on the opposite side of the box so without further ado let's crack this open and see what the final headmaster has in store for us and so here we have hardhead and his headmaster partner juros fully opened up and out of the packaging and much like my previous three reviews i'm actually rather impressed by how well done the titans return figures were indeed especially now with this all new paint deco this could potentially be the best hardhead that we've had released from Hasbro as of yet. Starting things off firstly, we'll begin by taking a look at the Headmaster Juros. You can see that we've got some fantastic sculpt work going along here, especially where the lower legs are concerned and the face sculpt is really, really well done. You can see clear definition of the eyes, nose and mouth and the paintwork too has also come out really well. As far as articulation is concerned, we get ball joints here for the shoulders, hinge joints for the hips, as well as hinge joints there for the knees. And as far as actually incorporating Juros into Hardhead's vehicle mode, there are indeed a couple of ways you can do so. So we do have this cockpit here, which you can open up just like so it can be rather difficult to do I have found but you simply just want to open that up which will reveal a slot that the tab on the base of the legs will indeed peg into so you could snap him in there if you so desired and of course close that cavity up or there is also another option that you can utilize and that would be to remove this gun here bring this entire section here back and you could have him mount this almost huge turret that hardhead does have on his vehicle mode so there is definitely quite a few options with this I personally really do like this particular option and love the overall compatibility compatibility aspect of all of these Titans return figures. I really hope in the future that Hasbro could potentially give us an updated line of headmasters as in my opinion from Titans return to now the War for Cybertron trilogy Hasbro have really drastically improved in their engineering as well as the quality of their materials that they are indeed using. Setting Juros here off to the side and focusing solely here on Hardhead's vehicle mode. This is a really really nicely done looking vehicle mode. To me this reminds me of a very sleek looking tank. You can see we've got some exceptional detail going on here for the treads much like the previous figures. I love how they've managed to give you the impression that they are using stickers where in actual fact they are using paint apps and of course painted on decals you can see we've got some fantastic red as well as silver there is some really nice sculpting in detail here for the treads and the same can also be applied here for the back ones as we take a look here from a bird's eye perspective you can see we've got this canopy section here at the front the autobot insignia as well as two autobot insignias here as these do become the shoulders of hardhead in robot mode we also have this huge cannon and the sculpt work too on this has come out really really impressive we've got the canopy here which has been cast out of a translucent orange plastic with some green paint apps applied over the top and I do like how the color of green used here for the paint does match the color of molded in green plastic. As far as additional accessories are concerned we do get one green blaster. I maybe would have liked to have seen two much like he's evoked on the front of the box art however unfortunately we do only get one but the detail too on this piece has come out really well and as far as rolling is concerned I was really surprised to see that the figure can glide really easily due to him having this huge wheel here at the front and then two here for the back treads. He can glide with ease along a flat surface which is really cool unfortunately these have been made out of a transparent plastic so I do worry about the longevity of these especially this front one I imagine that perhaps if you were to hit a bump or if you were to take this out on perhaps some gravel you could maybe crack this so be sure to take caution on the surface that you are rolling him around on as far as transformation is concerned to begin with I like to take the turret here and simply just remove it you could leave it on however I believe that when you remove it it just allows for some more clearance we can then turn our attention here to the underside you're going to want to take the crutch plate here Hold this entire section up until it snaps securely into place. We can then disengage the fires from these tabs. So just pull this section here out and repeat the same process. We can then elongate this double hinge joint and snap that into place there. Repeat the same process here. Turn your attention here to the base and you're going to want to flip out the toes and of course repeat that there on the opposite side. We can then turn our attention here around to the front, extend these joints up like so. You're then going to want to disengage this entire assembly here 
from the back which will then allow you to fold the main torso up until that snaps into place. You'll then want to take this section where you can see a hinge joint, arch this back and you can also see how we do have a tab there that will peg into a slot on the back plate. So just bring this entire assembly down, snap that into place with this section we can bring this up. You'll then want to turn your attention here to the arms, extend these joints and of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side. Fold out the wrists on both sides and set the hard head robot mode there off to the side as we bring in his headmaster partner, Juros. And of course, you're just going to want to transform him into the actual head component. We can then snap that in there to the top, bring in some of the accessories. So here we have the huge cannon. You're going to want to ensure that for robot mode, the pin is indeed visible on the left side. For vehicle mode, it is here on the right. If you leave it here, you will unfortunately find some clearance issues as of course the head is now pegged on. So just slide that there to the side bring the shoulder cannon in, snap that there into place, and of course we can bring in his blaster. And here we have Hardhead fully transformed up into what is in my opinion once again a really nicely done looking robot mode. Now, as far as sculpt work and paintwork is concerned, I do believe that the head here is a direct carryover from the Takara Tomi Legends release, which is now an incredibly elusive figure to actually track down. So it's great that we are getting this re-released version, of course, what is hopefully being produced in mass quantities. We've got some really nice looking paintwork going on here, such as the grey helmet section, the blue visor, as well as the yellow paint apps there for the face. And much like the detail we saw from Juros' robot mode, the definition to the eyes, nose and mouth is clearly seen. We also have got that same canopy that we saw in alt mode here for the chest and I think this here works really nicely. We've got some green sculpted invents, Autobot insignias here on the sides of the shoulders. I do love the paintwork here to the lower crutch plate. Unfortunately, fresh out the packaging, I did unfortunately have some scuffs here on the silver. And as this figure does come packaged in his alt mode, it would be rather difficult to actually tell as to whether or not you do have a QC issue on your particular figure. Much like I mentioned in alt mode, I love how Hasbro is giving you the impression that they are using stickers when in actual fact they are printed on decals. And an example of that can be seen here for the fires. This here has come out really well done very g1 inspired in terms of its overall aesthetic you can see here for the arms these in my opinion look slightly too lanky i imagine that if you were so inclined you could actually compress these and i personally believe that with them compressed it looks so much better than having the double joint there extended so for a display you could definitely do that and you could actually utilize this hinge joint here for the elbow although if you do decide to compress them you unfortunately do not get the double range of motion we can see we've got some nice sculpt work going on here for the forearms as well as the fingers and then as we turn our attention here down to the tray you can see the sculpt work on these two have come out really really well as far as articulation is concerned we of course get a ball joint here at the head which can rotate the full 360 look up down of course side to side the main cannon itself can lift up and can also swivel left to right we get full 360 rotation here on ball joints at the shoulders due to the nature of the transformation you can utilize this hinge joint in order to move these outwards we get full 360 rotation here at the bicep we get a somewhat double joint here at the elbow if you do decide to extend this joint you can see how it can curl slightly past 90 although due to the nature of the design it is pretty much just a 90 degree range of motion we do get a full 360 rotation here at the wrists unfortunately no form of waist rotation due to how the entire back assembly does attach to the back of the figure we do get ball joints here at the legs which can kick forwards that far back that far of course out to the sides full 360 rotation here at the fire and something which is worth noting is that all of the joints do feel incredibly durable and tight on this particular figure despite this once again being a reissue of a figure which i believe is now three or four years old we also do get 90 degree bend there at the knee and then as far as the foot articulation is concerned unfortunately we only get the toe which can pivot forwards and backwards which is entirely down to transformation so overall as far as sculpt work is concerned I think this is a really well done figure the paint apps really do work I love the way the head sculpt looks especially as it is the Takara Tomi Legends version and not the masked more toy accurate version that we got on the original release I also think this huge shoulder cannon here looks awesome and the fact that you can pose this around to your so desire too allows for many different display options I love the compatibility with the actual headmaster in the alt mode. I love how you can store him in the canopy or of course attach him here to the turret and I guess you could also do that here for the robot mode if you really wanted to so you could extend that there and have him use his robot mode as this almost plinth to fire this huge cannon so that is definitely something you could do to me this is giving me age of extinction lockdown vibes i think the articulation is adequate for this figure of course as this is a older release it doesn't have the now standard waist swivel and of course ankle rocker pivot but for the most part i think you are able to get this figure in a fair decent amount of poses so overall if you did unfortunately miss out on the original release of hardhead and you are looking to pick up some of these headmasters for your collection i think that this figure and all of the other figures in this wave are a great opportunity especially as 
as at least in my opinion their paint decos are superior over any other previous release that we have got and I do love the head sculpts that they have indeed incorporated onto these releases. So that just about wraps up my review here for the fourth and final figure to be released as part of this first wave of G1 inspired retro reissue headmaster figures. I really hope that you enjoyed this review. Please be sure to let me know down in the comment section below on whether or not you plan on adding any of these figures to your collection and be sure to stay tuned to the channel for wave two reviews. I thank you all for watching and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.